All right, hey you guys, welcome back to Air Combat USA and Taking Flight with me. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. I'm gonna go through a fun little episode about basic fighter maneuvers and air combat maneuvering. And in this world, we like to turn everything into acronyms. So BFM and ACM is the code word for what we're gonna talk about today. Now, at Air Combat USA, we've been doing this a long time, 36 years at this point. And this is how this company got started. This is something that, that my dad felt was so worth uh, people to experience and explore. And what Top Gun attempted to do was to show this world of the fighter pilot of dogfighting, of two airplanes trying to maneuver into each other, as we call six o'clock position, in order to get an offensive place to deploy a weapon. And in Top Gun, it's a lot of missiles, right? You see the, the, uh, the missile on the F-14, the original one, and then in the new one, they've got the guns going as well. So you get to see them deploy this, but you don't really see the tactics involved in what it takes to actually get in trail. Once you're in trail, then it's just tail chase, right? You just two airplanes running down the road like, like two uh, uh, bike riders in the, in the uh, Tour de France, you know, just chase and chase, chase. But, but really, there's a third dimension that really makes air combat and basic fighter maneuvers so, so interesting. Now, in the world of our uh, fighter pilot, World War II style. My left hand over here, we've got the, the P-51, and in the, in the right hand, we've got the Spitfire, British Spitfire. Um, but when you're talking similar aircraft, similar planes um, dogfighting each other, it really, really neutralizes the playing field. So let's just pretend that these are exact performing machines um, like our Marchettis. Two SF-260s dogfighting each other would be very similar to two P-51s dogfighting each other in World War II. So kind of put yourself into that, that world of that fighter pilot from the days gone by in World War II. Now let's talk briefly about what the end goal is here. What are we trying to really do? And ultimately, if you can see in this diagram, this is, is your opponent and this is you and you're working your way back into what we call the, this basket, this, this, uh, this saddle, this, this uh, deployment window, this envelope, and you're trying to get yourself in our world between 500 and 1,000 feet in trail. So how do we know when we're 500 to 1,000 feet in trail? We look through our gun sight, which is this, and we align the, uh, the horizontal bar, which is our wing line, across the wings of our opponent, and we're measuring their wingspan relative to the inner circle. Now these are, these are scales not quite right here, but this is a 50 mil ring. And if the 50 mil ring was filled with Marchetti wingspan, which is approximately a 27 foot wing, was filling the inner circle, the 50 mil ring, it would fill it at 500 feet. So when the Marchetti wingspan is filling it, you are right here, okay? So this is the minimum gun range that we're gonna get to. And when you're that close, you have to be pretty close to exactly in trail to make that kill happen. So at 500 feet in trail, you're gonna look something like this. Now you notice how the cone opens up. The farther back you go, the, the bigger the angle off the tail that you are able to achieve. So, so in this case, we're talking about maybe 30, 45 degrees angle off the tail as you open up the, the, the lateral separation between the nose of your aircraft and the tail of the target aircraft. You're able to shoot up to 1,000 feet and up to maybe 30 or 45 degrees off the tail, something like this. Now we call this aspect. And we're gonna be able to adjust that as, as, we, as we're going along here. But ultimately, this is the, the weapons envelope you're trying to get to in order to deploy the 50 caliber simulated machine gun, okay? Now, if you're gonna shoot a different weapon, there'd be a different envelope, and then you'd be doing into missile tactics and something else. But, but for the old school, there were no missiles in World War II, guns only, which is really, really cool. And that's what Air Combat USA is simulating when we dogfight each other, one versus one, BFM and the Marchetti. So again, back to World War II, 500 feet, close in trail, nearly aligned uh, aspect wise, like almost straight up the tailpipe. And then up to a thousand feet, you're able to swoop out and go a little bit more angle off the tail. Now what happens when you adjust this aspect is it's going to increase your, your closure, okay? So there's three things we're, we're thinking about while we're shooting. And it's gonna be distance, 
nose to tail separation, how far am I from my opponent? And then aspect, what's my angle off the tail, okay? And then my closure, right? So I, I'm working these three math problems simultaneously as, we, as we're maneuvering. If the aspect gets too high, the closure starts to increase and you'll, you'll begin getting to a spot where you'll, you'll, you'll get too close. You'll get inside of 500 feet too quickly. And if the aspect is too low, you're, you may never catch this guy, right? So, so you're gonna need some sort of a turn. You're gonna need to either go pipper on, which we call pure pursuit. Pipper on is where the, the pipper is the gun sight's center point. That's where the bullets are gonna go, okay? Under zero G, uh, you're gonna be putting your pipper straight on that or little, or on the other airplane. And if there's no gravity or no G on the airplane, when you squeeze the trigger, the bullets in theory should fly where the pipper is. Of course, as they fly, the bullets start to slow down and then they start to fall short. So then you're gonna have to do what we call pull some lead. You'll have to put the pipper out in front of your opponent like this, if you're looking at it from, from the cockpit, you would put your pipper out in front and this way your bullets would fly ahead and then as they fall short, they'll fall onto the, to the opponent's airplane. This is a complicated problem. So back in the early days, World War I style, like these guys were flying biplanes and close in shooting the guns, they were starting to notice you know, you shoot a low powered round and it's not even reaching the target, they're falling short. How can I see the round? Then they went to um, the, the rounds that you could see called uh, 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 the, the, the rounds that you can see. You, you, you shard them and you could see the actual, the, the flare, like literally the, the, the rounds that actually light up as they fly along. Um, so you're able to see the rounds. That really helped the, the accuracy of the shooting when you could see them. Okay, um, so that's your, that's how you shoot. Pipper on is pure pursuit. Pipper out in front is lead pursuit. And pipper behind is lag pursuit. And you use lead, lag, and pure pursuit to help you close the distance on your opponent. And, and that's important because we got to get within the gun range in order to shoot, okay? All right, so those are the main focal points of these pursuit curves to chase someone down. Now, in order to expedite this process, how do we get the airplane to close on them very, very rapidly? Not only do, would you pull lead pursuit, but you'd push the nose over and help the airplane accelerate by running downhill like this. So as you're diving and accelerating, you're letting gravity help you now, and you're gonna be able to to do what we call a low yo-yo. So now you're gonna accentuate the closure. So if this guy out in front of you is doing 150 knots and now we're inside of his turn with lead pursuit and then also accelerate, now we're doing 170, 180 knots. You're not only gonna close because of the, of the angle, uh, the aspect of the closure uh, angle like this, but also because of the increase in speed. It, it, it helps accentuate the, the closure rate. So this is called a low yo-yo. Once we get inside of a thousand feet, the natural tendency is to want to go straight to guns. Just pull that nose up and start shooting. But remember, you have this massive amount of closure, so you would be still continuing to rapidly overtake this airplane and, and have a, a, a very high closure rate in close, which would not be good. So inside of a thousand feet, you may need to and should check away, so you'd bank away, putting your lift vector behind your, your target up and away and moving your, your airplane into what we call a high yo-yo or lag pursuit curve this way, slowing and stopping the closure. And once you get that under control, you're going to notice that the other airplane begins to move forward again. Reverse course, align your fuselages, align your wings, pipper back on, now back into pure pursuit and now you're gonna be back into open fire shooting position, okay? So lead pursuit with the nose down is called a low yo-yo. Lag with a high yo-yo, pitch up and outside of the turn this way. Once you get the closure under control, reverse course, we call it back stick and angle of bank. So bank the airplane over, a little bit of G through here, aligning the fuselages, checking the aspect, pipper back on, align the horizontal bar with the wing line of your opponent, and then open fire. Okay, so we use that gun sight to help us calibrate our eyeball, but also to keep things moving smoothly, right? So, so as you maneuver the airplane, you end up with your wings aligned with your opponent's wings, more or less. 
and this would be what a 500 foot gun kill would look like straight up the tailpipe, okay? And this would be kind of what you're ho hoping for. You use this horizontal bar here to align with the wing line of your opponent. Does that make sense? So that's nice and, uh, nice and smooth. All right, so that's what you're ultimately trying to get to. Well, how do you get to that point? So, so you just aren't flying along one day and you go, oh, there's a bad guy. I think I'm gonna swoop in on him and I'm just gonna try a low yo-yo on this guy. To, to make it much more realistic and much more fun, is you take the two airplanes and you put them far enough apart so that they can turn towards each other and have a nice neutral start, okay? This neutral start, we call, um, we call a neutral pass, 180 degrees out, we call it a high aspect 1v1 fights on, right? So right when we pass wings level and, and, and a beam each other, fights on. Well, you got two choices when you get here, but now we're talking about the same airplane. If they were different airplanes, there would be more choices, but because it's the same airplane, you really have basically one or two choices. One is you turn towards each other into what we call a two circle fight. And what that looks like is this, right? The two airplanes cross and they both turn towards each other and as they do, they're making their own circle. So, so in this case, the Spitfire is making a left and turning this way. The Mustang is making a left and turn, making his circle this way. And you can see that their turn radiuses are the same and now they're, they're going around and around. This is what a two circle fight would look like. Something like this, okay, round and around. Well, if somebody does a little better job maneuvering the airplane and getting optimal performance out of their wing, they'll slowly begin to start eating away at the other guy's circle and start to work, work their way into a positive or an offensive position. Now they can start working their low and high yo-yos, okay? But when they're the same airplane, that's a tricky program, all right? The one circle fight is when we come in and, and I, let's say the P-51 Mustang is the one we're in, we go left and the Spitfire goes right and now you're both into the same circle. The only way you, only reason why you'd really want to do this is if you knew your airplane could significantly outturn your opponent. So uh, if you were not flying a P-51 Mustang or something similar, and you were flying something like an extra 300 or a Pitts, and you come in and you go, well, I know I can outturn this guy. So while the, well, the, the P-51 goes left, they might go hard right and attempt to get a really hard tight turn and maybe get a shot off. In the, first, in the first turn. That's really the only time you would go for the one circle in my mind. Now, in our world, there's more to this than just level turns. So coming in and just cranking hard left or hard right, that's only one aspect. What about a vertical turn? What's the benefit to using a vertical maneuver? And in the fighter world, you can imagine if, you, if you're going fast, and in Marchetti's it's 160, 180 knots. If you're going fast, you have the ability to pull four and a half, five Gs there. But what we also have the ability to do is as we pull up, we're able to stop our downrange travel into a vertical position this way. If you think about it, my ground speed over the earth is now stopped. So cool, right? So think about that. If we stop our downrange travel by pulling vertical, my circle is infinitely small now. Now we can rotate our airplane in the direction we'd like to go this way, rotating our lift vector to where the bad guy is. If he's in a left-hand turn, we rotate a little bit this way. If I wanna do a little lead pursuit, I roll out here. If I wanna do a little lag pursuit, I roll back here. So we can literally point the airplane where we want to fall towards and then gently pull back on the stick. And as, as the speed goes lower and lower, we can get a small radius of turn here, but now we're really slow. Now what's our next move? Dive, dive, dive into a low yo-yo, dive, 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 build up some speed, cut across the circle. And if the distance is inside of a thousand, but more than 500, maybe pop a shot here, maybe do a little bit of a high yo-yo, okay? get it under control, nice and gentle, back into gun's parameter and shoot. You know, and then sometimes in the movies you might see them turn away, guns jink, right? They go the other direction. So right about the time that, you, that you're doing a high yo-yo here and floating outside, the other guy reverses the, the direction and maybe you've got a, working this thing into a horizontal scissors, okay? So that's the, the kind of the, the basics of what a dogfight 
looks like. It's really, think about where you want to be. I want to achieve the, the, the offensive position into the, the saddle, into the, the weapons envelope of the gun. How do I get there? Low and high yo-yos. And then when I get to the, to the merge, the dogfight begins right as we pass, fights on. What's my first move? Is it a climbing left? Which is usually what mine is. I love this. So a huge climbing left to slow the plane down, pop up. We call this an Immelman. Pop up and over the top this way. Roll out. See where your opponent is. If he's out in front of you, dump the nose, accelerate, dive down, do a low yo-yo, pull your nose up and shoot into the gun's envelope. Looks something like this. So I hope you found this interesting and, and, uh, and useful so that you now know a little bit more about what we call basic fighter maneuvers and air combat maneuvering. This is what Air Combat USA is all about. This is what, what the two-ship dogfight looks like. Again, we are still working on uh, the franchise opportunity with Air Combat USA. If this is something you wanna do, you wanna incorporate dogfighting into your life, we will help you make that happen. And start with one airplane. Learn how to fly this thing, get really good at it. Operate it solo, one V zero. Learn how to do that mission. And then we'll step up to what we just talked about, BFM and ACM is amazing. It's something that every, every pilot, every person in the world should get a chance to try. Air Combat USA has been doing this for 36 years. Happy to work with you and, and help make it a reality in your life. Uh, take it to the next level. Again, my name is Mike Blackstone, Air Combat USA, and taking flight with me. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.